this is where I departed from the Can-Am rear suspension design. So this is the back of the vehicle. I have a mid-mounted engine, reverse mounted, with the transmission pointing forward, and then I have full independent suspension. So the diff is fixed in space. There's no live axle back there, but I still have these crazy long trophy truck arms. These are 72 inches long, which is pretty nuts, but I needed that length to get the instant center in the right place so that I have the right anti-squat and the right vehicle dynamics. So this is totally different from anything I've seen before. The Can-Ams use a really complicated set of multi-links on this one, I wanted to use the same portal hub tall knuckle design in the front and the rear. So this assembly is identical to what's in the front. And then the links are just different. So rather than A arms, I have a trailing arm. And then these are called radius links, the upper and lower radius links. And so this is another big piece of billet 7075. And then another one at the top. And so all of the force loads from the tire are going to go through the wheel, into the radius link, and then into the trailing arm, and then work their way up into the shock. So this is the load bearing component. This upper link just constrains the top of the tall knuckle. So I'll show you what that cycling looks like. So as the suspension droops down, again, I have almost three feet of suspension travel in the rear. The only limit here is this axle, but this trailing arm rotates within this housing on the radius link, and then all the force goes up into the shocks. So standard coil carrier and bypass shock with another bump stop and a slapper arm. And then these parts are just keeping everything oriented in the right direction. So then as the wheel comes back up, that slapper arm is going to contact the top of the trailing arm, and then the bump stop engages. So that's super cool. And this is a totally new independent rear suspension design that I've never seen before. And it allows yet another giant piece of billet candy for the trailing arm. So these trailing arms typically are made out of 4130 chromoly and they're fabricated. More and more people are starting to run billet trailing arms, particularly I'm thinking of guys like Kibbe Tech, but I think these are going to become more and more common because it's sort of a known quantity of how strong it is because you can run it through FEA in a way that you can't really do that with sheet metal, at least not in SOLIDWORKS, at least I don't know how to do it. But a big piece like this is going to be incredibly strong, incredibly precise, and it takes a lot less time to cut something like this out than it does to hand fab a big old trailing arm. 